you join us at the ball. Tom's clapping for some reason. I am clapping. And uh, we're here to celebrate well, since actually Women's Day and basically the growth of women's football. Yep, and as you can see behind us, if you can, there are plenty of girls playing football at the minute. Um, I think they're expecting 300 to 400, so it's just a good day for the, the women's game, really, isn't it? Why? I like how you try to do your BBC presenter voice. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Take it, but this is the podcast. Take it seriously. It's a good point. Yeah. High quality journalism. <laughs> That's exactly what makes it funny. We have been speaking to uh, Tash Dow, we've been speaking to uh, uh, four, four referees. Four yeah. referees. Uh, Come over. Lewis Qualtro, the interim for now. Yeah, CEO inter- of the yeah he tells us it might be getting changed, but. We don't, know. we don't know if that means X or if that means... <laughs> yeah, he's either getting sat or he's getting promoted. There's yeah. no between. One or the other. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we've got their interviews coming up now, which we're going to hopefully put in. Now, ELS are over there playing music, trying to drown us out. Yet again, more of the mainstream media attacking the next one. But, <laughs> Happens but, all the time, uh, mate. After, after Rock Bridge, I've stole our table. Yeah. I wonder latest. if there's any tables. We haven't been to the podcast room in a while. I wonder if there's anything there. Probably not. <laughs> the mic's gone. There's a picture of Cam A. Food as I They might have taken that. Yeah. That would really hurt. Anyway, um, thank yeah. you as a fortune, and let's see what we've got. Go women. Hi, I'm Vicky Hotchkiss. I'm a non executive director for the Isle of Man Football Association. And tell us, behind you, we can see a load of girls playing football. Tell us what today is all about. So today is twofold really, so the first is to celebrate and thank all of the amazing women and girls who take part in Isle of Man football, not just the players on the pitch but also including all of the women volunteers who make everything happen behind the scenes and the second part for us really is to give a very very strong mark of intent as to our commitment to women and girls football over the next four years. The FA are already, I already know they're doing so much. We had a podcast last week speaking to um, speaking to some of the referees and the girls involved. I heard it, it was really good. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Good. How important is a day like today for girls and women in the Isle of Man to get involved in something like this? I think marking days like International Women's Day with events like this is hugely important for many, many reasons, um, including just raising visibility of what women and girls can achieve in the sport uh, to bring communities together so we'll hopefully get quite a lot of spectators, there's already quite a few in, we'll get quite a few spectators all coming together to, to see what, what can be achieved. And also because I think this brings a lot of commercial opportunities for local businesses to get involved that wouldn't have this opportunity otherwise. I'm Lewis Faltro, I'm currently the Interim Chief Executive Officer for the Isle of Man Football Association. And Lewis, tell us what today's all about. This is an absolute celebration of football, uh, of the women and girls game as part of International Women's Day. Um, and we're celebrating all the players, coaches, administrators, volunteers involved with the sport and, and rewarding them and celebrating the success of the game. We're really hoping that this is an event that can help grow participation here on the Isle of Man for both our junior girls and women's game and we're looking to capitalise on this event um, moving forward in our business strategy. And just behind you there's loads of girls playing football already now, how pleasing is it to see so many out today? No, it's fantastic, we should have around about 300 to 400 girls across the course of this evening and then the women's uh, national team game later on at 7.15 so really good that um, all of our clubs have um, bought into the event we have 17 different teams from our clubs that are down and the girls are having a great showcase. And it's not just about today that the FA are doing work about the women's game, there's loads more other stuff. Tell us a bit about the other stuff that you guys are doing. Oh no, we're right in the middle of a um, planning our business strategy for the next four years, which will um, officially start July the 1st. Um, and there's lots involved with the organisation of football from a development point of view and a governance point of view and a services point of view. And we want to make sure that we, everything that we do is the best it can possibly be. Uh, and we're utilising this as a bit of a as a bit of a showcase event to to show everybody what we're what's coming in the next four years too. Hi, I'm Pei, and I'm the going to be in the middle today. Um, I'm Ella and I'm um, assistant referee. I'm Brogan, also assistant referee. I'm Georgia, I'm going to be the fourth official today. Um, just as soon as we start thinking, have any of you been to the arm before? <laughs> Never been, first time, very How are you excited. finding it? It's lovely, yeah. It feels like home to me because I'm from northwest England, so. <laughs> Obviously, today it's all about growing the uh, girls' game on the island and the women's game on the island. Is that something that you're seeing already coming into effect across in England? 
I think especially since the Women's World Cup in 2019 and then the Euros in 2022, women and girls playing football has been rising exponentially. But what's really interesting for us as referees is how many more women and girls are interested in being match officials because they're seeing more and more women doing it, like in the big tournaments, and they're thinking, oh, wow, I could, I could maybe do that. And so, you know, that's where we've all come from. We've come on that journey where we thought, well, maybe I could do that, and we've just given it a go. It is a journey you've seen, obviously, with rugby. They've just recently had the first female official in the Six Nations. That's grown into the World Cup there as well. Do you think football is playing catch-up a little bit on that side of the things, or...? So in terms of... Uh, in terms of um, female representation and officiating, both in the women's game but and in the men's game as well? It's... it's <laughs> there, are de- there are definitely less women, obviously, officiating in the men's game, but even just within our team, a few of us referee in the men's game. And it's really great to see role models like Stephanie Frappard refereeing at the Men's World Cup last November. Um, and I think that, it, that it's just going to start happening more and more. I mean, we're all big fans of uh, Rebecca Welsh from the North East as well. And obviously she had a first Premier League game mm. quite recently. So I think the more role models we see doing that, the more it, p- people are going to want to do it and the more it's going to happen. So what was it, what was it about, um, obviously, no one goes into football unless they love it. What was it about officiating that attracted you guys to it? Yeah, the ability to still be involved. I mean, I love football, but I was never very good at it. So to be able to, you know, still be involved at a high level, and refereeing absolutely gave me the chance to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just enjoyed it. It's quite different to play, isn't it? You see everything in charge of everything. Um, for me, I was playing the National League but got injured so it was a way to stay in the game. Um, and then, yeah, I love And have you had much of a chance to speak to the guys on the ground here at all yet? Or about um, what they're trying to do to improve the um, number of women in fishing on the island? It's been really exciting getting to know the team at the Isle of Man FA because they are so committed to getting more women and girls into officiating and it, it sounds like women and girls playing is on definitely growing mm. um, but you know we're here because we want people to see women and girls refereeing so that they think that they could maybe do it as well. And just um, for me to be that's okay, just if there was one thing that you could say to sort of, I know like the thing I've said to your younger selves but to a girl who would see this or see you guys refereeing tonight um, what would you say looking to them saying you know if they're looking at getting involved in doing refereeing and don't reckon it could be for them just give it a go like <laughs> obviously there are I think the channels there's the support there um, so it's, it's a way you can stop yourself and say give it a go can I add to that I would, I would say same as pay it's the perfect time to give it a go because people want you to do it and the support is there and it's great for especially for younger people for experience of working with lots of different types of people building your confidence keeping fit and then being involved in the game at a really high level so that it's a massive opportunity Natasha Dowie, I recently retired from football. I'm now the first female ambassador for Liverpool Football Club and I've come along today to get involved in the Women's Football Day today and give out some certificates, get involved, say hi to all the girls and yeah, just really, really excited and so happy to see so many young girls playing football which just puts a big smile on my face. First of all, Natasha, have you ever been to the Old Man before? Never. Never? This is no. the first time? Yeah, so absolutely loved it. So did you arrive today, did you? I arrived yesterday. So I uh, went round, you know, uh, Laxey up the mountains, went to the Shed coffee shop, very nice, overlooking the water, um, had some lovely food today, uh, just locally actually, and yeah, it has a lot to offer. I can understand, you know, why you guys want to live here, you know, it's, island life is nice and relaxed, it's kind of what I'm into as well, so I will definitely be back in the future. Absolutely. <laughs> and the football here, the FA are massively pushing girl, women and girls football, and rightly so, There's a, in the UK, I think since the World Cup and things like that, we've seen a massive uplift in people playing and even just looking behind you you can see so many girls down here hopefully around 300 400 down today how important do you think it is for not just the island man but the uk in general to promote the girls game yeah, it's huge i think this is why I'm, I'm so happy because when i was younger 
the opportunity to play wasn't there. You know, I wasn't able to play in school, in primary school or secondary school. It was only really through my dad getting me involved that I then obviously became a professional football player. So now, for these girls to have this opportunity, whether they want to be a professional football player or just play for fun, that's, that's the main thing for me. And I think the way the women's game's going, it is going at quite a frightening pace. Um, but, you know, the future's bright, you know. And today, to be able to say to these young girls that if you want to be a professional football player, you can be. I think that's so cool because, like I said, when I was younger, that was never the case. Absolutely. And when you were playing as a professional footballer, did you ever envisage you'd be doing a job like this? No, never. <laughs> no, you know, even when I was making my journey through, you know, football and obviously looking back now, I've had, had played in six different countries for what, over 14 teams and having played for England, you know, I, I still kind of have to pinch myself sometimes. And, and now to say that I'm an ambassador of Liverpool Football Club. Yeah, it's pretty surreal, but I think for me, I, I'm really quite honoured, you know, that people then allow me to come and do events like today. And, you know, I think sometimes I find it hard that I'm a role model. I just see myself as Tash Dowie. Mm. But when you see some of the young kids wanting to come up and get autographs, you kind of have to realise that actually you are a role model and you have a responsibility and a lot of these young girls do look up to you so that's where I take real pride then in trying to live my life the right way and I think I did that as a football player and now obviously this new life that I'm living it's a case of right I'm not tashed out with a football player anymore but I can still inspire I can still open doors for more females because I am the first ambassador but hopefully there'll be more opportunities for females in my role and in other roles as well in life as well absolutely and it's great that there's going to be 300 400 girls here I know the, the women are going to be playing later but what would you say to a girl who potentially won't come down tonight it's maybe yeah. thinking it's not for me or yeah. it's maybe not decided she doesn't want to play didn't get the opportunities that many others yeah. had what would you say to them girls you know what I'm a big one in just try you know and Joe, you know if you don't like it you don't like it but I think I love trying different things in life, you know, and for me, I think it is an important thing, you know, and you don't have to want to be a professional football player, but for me, mentally, physically, you know, just getting out, being active, you know, being out in the fresh air, you know, life is quite stressful sometimes, you know, you're at school, you're studying, you know, the stresses of life, so to be able to have like maybe half an hour of actually not having to worry about anything, being with your friends, you know, taking in the fresh air and, and exercise is good for you so I would say give it a go and you know what then if you don't like it that's okay but why not try it you know it's Absolutely. not going to hurt give it a go exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly and finally I just got to add you play for Liverpool and Everton I believe yeah. <laughs> How did that go down when you moved? So I just, I'm just curious as a yeah. Liverpool fan. <laughs> Luckily, back then, football probably wasn't as big. I got a little bit of abuse online, but nothing too crazy. And I think in the women's game, it's not as intense as the men's. Mm. So you see that movement quite a lot. It's happened a lot with like to Lucy Bronze, Alex Greenwood. I think she's played for City, Liverpool and Everton. So, it's unheard of, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so I think it, it happens quite a lot. But look, I, I'm really passionate about both clubs. Liverpool's my team now, but mm. I had five amazing years at Everton. Won the FA Cup with Everton, you know, there'll definitely be a club that is close to my heart but Liverpool's my team now and yeah will always be my team I can't <laughs> tell you how glad I am to hear that that's perfect thank you very much yeah we hope you've enjoyed today and uh, we'll be back doing what we do soon we've got some good guests I reckon coming up oh god some good guests I'm not, I'm not going to allude to anyone but there's, uh, there's a few lined up that uh, I'm sure people will want to hear or won't hear people will just rather not listen but there's a few good ones that we talk about the, um, the new structure, the league structure, we'll be discussing that. Yep, we've got so, that coming up. Um, yeah. But for now, uh, this has all been about women's football and girls football in the island. So, yeah, if you're interested to get involved, just seek out your club, speak to the FA, message Dave and Andy at Sports, and whatever you want. You know, we'll, Don't message Dave, you want to run? It's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, we're cool. um, But yeah, if you want to get involved, do get involved, because as, as, uh, as we've all said today, there's never been a better time to get involved in Women's Footy. So for now, Tom, self-announced.